Hi, I'm Elaine Bookart. And I'm Jean Persson. Hi. Um, and we're going to tell you a little bit about how this farmer's market started. Um, Jean and I are both on the Andover Economic Development Commission. And a couple years ago, the Coventry Farmer's Market down the road, which is very successful, won a contest and got a barn. Um, they were on Nathan Hill property and they weren't interested in having the barn built on their property. So all of a sudden we started thinking, hey, it looks like there's a farmer's market up for grabs. So we started talking about it in the EDC. And then we found out from Coventry that they were keeping it no matter where they went, that you know no other town could have it. And so we decided we were going to have our own. Um, we decided it would be great if it could be off of Route 6 because there's a whole bunch of traffic that goes back and forth on Route 6. Uh, we decided Friday evening so that we wouldn't be uh, butting up against any of the other local farmers markets, but which a lot of them are on Saturday mornings. And um, also the drive time traffic from Hartford. Oh, the, the drive time tra traffic. We're told 17,000 cars travel every day <laughs> this way. Um, and we um, talked among ourselves. We talked to the state uh, that has a department that just handles farmers markets in the state. Uh, Mike Gotti, he came and talked to us and kind of told us how we would get started. Um, we also had uh, Diane Treb from uh, Ellington, who's in charge of the Ellington Farmers Market. And she, yeah, and she came and she talked to us and gave us a bunch of ideas. So we decided that's it. We're going to form a Farmers Market Committee, of which Jean and I are on that committee too. The most important thing was finding market masters, and Mike and Kathy Palazzi were generous to go ahead and say, yep, they were willing to do it. Um, and we tried to get things off the ground last year, but we, we started too late. And, you know, the farmers needed a little bit more time to get their um, schedule in order to be able to do a farmer's market. So um, a lot of them knew about us, and we said, okay, we're going to do it the next year. And this is it. This is the first day, July 11th, 2014, that we're doing our market. Um, going to run for 10 weeks. Yep. And we'll be here every Friday from 4 to 7. Yep, until, until uh, September 12th. September 12th is our last one. So we'll, and we're very proud of it because it, it's a lot of work, it took a lot of time, yep. and it's wonderful to see it come to fruition. Start of the market was um, so many people have been asking in town if uh, we couldn't have a farmers market. Why, if they could have one in the surrounding towns, why couldn't we have one? So um, the CIP, um, no, excuse me, excuse me, not CIP. It's the EDC. Yeah, EDC. They wanted. Uh, they decided to t undertake that, and uh, so they asked my husband Michael and myself to become uh, the market masters. Uh, they wanted us to open last year, you may have heard, and uh, we couldn't because the insurance could not be worked out with the uh, town, the lawyers, and so forth. But it has been worked out, and we ended up with 32 booths, farmers, market uh, vendors, and uh, farmers. So we're very pleased, very happy. The committee themselves put hundreds of hours in, literally, and tried to get it off the ground last year, but kind of ran into a couple of roadblocks. But we're real happy to see 
that it's now full running and operational and congratulations to all who did the work. Let me just say that I, I grew up in Nantucket. We had less than 3,000 people. I know what it's like to live in a small town. This is small town America at its best. Thanks. It is the best Enjoy town it. From Western View Farm. Um, my husband grew up on a hobby farm and I grew up on, my grandparents had um, a hobby farm. My grandmother had chickens and blueberries and I have the exact same thing. Um, my dad even when we lived in the city grew a garden and I knew and he knew we weren't going to stay in the city so we moved out to Tolland and I live out in West Stafford. Um, the name of our farm, what I call it, is Western View because we're 1,050 feet up and we're in a, a sugar bush of maple trees and we, we started with our own maple syrup as gifting and my daughter, who actually has four children now, um, gave me a recipe for apple maple butter so I expanded my maple syrup market into that. I have jams and jellies and some are recipes that um, only I have made up their special recipe like razzleberry and berry berry. Um, I also have my grandma's um, pepper relish recipe and a couple other recipes and the vegetables are grown with melorganite fertilizer which is organic, it's natural, it's made of like deer blood and so you're not getting um, and I don't uh, and none of the wash away goes to the maple trees so everything's organic that grows in my yard and we have a bigger farm in Tolland and that's when the corn will come in but it's just above knee high right now so we don't have the corn but I have hobby chickens and I can and preserve all this and more there's a lot that you can't sell because the state of Connecticut you have to have a, a commercial license this is allowed because it's a water bath process and the vegetables don't have bug spray or anything like that on them We use Connecticut ingredients in our hot sauces. Um, our owner is a chef, so the flavor is the most important bit. Um, we do several farmer's markets a week. Find us in Coventry just down the road on Sundays. And I do tastings. Try anything you want. Hi, I'm Michelle Bad Stubner, and I am to hear all natural. To hear means pure. I make homemade soap um, with the all natural ingredients. We've got olive oil, coconut oil, palm oil, sweet almond oil, avocado oil, mango butter. I've been making soap for years. Um, this is my first farmer's market, so come on out to Andover and join us. Hi, I'm from uh, CJ Pogmore from Bluebird Hill Farm. Um, we grow apples, peaches, uh, plums, all the veggies you can think of, sweet corn. We're here at the Andover's Farmer, Andover Farmer's Market today, and um, we'll be here all season. And you can check us out on Route 87 in Lebanon, Connecticut.
I am Terry Harrow and I have ESP Pottery. I've been um, a potter for about seven years now. I've been selling um, very successfully at the Ellington Farmer's Market, so I really enjoy doing the farmer's markets. I'm currently in the process of um, getting a shop. I'm working on that and hopefully by the fall season I'll be able to sell my pottery and have lessons in a, in a shop permanent location. I do a lot of um, centerpiece uh, decorative things and a lot of functional stuff. I'm Claudia from Clobby's Crafts. I'm here at the Endover Farmer's Market. Uh, today it's my first Farmer's Market and I am displaying and selling um, outdoor tic-tac-toe boards. Could be left out in all weather. And I am selling magnetic um, bottle openers and wall mounting bottle openers with cap catches. My name is Roxanne Hosking and I'm a, a, an artist and these are some of my artwork that I do with the wool from my own sheep. Um, I don't shear my sheep anymore by myself. I have friends that do that. Um, and this is one of the fleeces over to my left from Monday, from this past Monday. I live right here in Andover on Wales Road. I have been doing this for about 12 years and I also give lessons at my home. I needle felt, which is what all this work is. I also spin and weave. Um, my spinning, actually right over here, is my, my yarn that I have spun. It's um, sort of like a herringbone type thing. Um, two different colors, two different fibers. The white color is alpaca and the dark brown is from one of my older sheep who has gone bye-bye. Um, again, I've been doing this for 12, over 12 years. Um, I started when I found out that I was ill and couldn't drive anymore and couldn't teach anymore and what do you do with your time? Well, about two weeks later, I'm sitting in church, kind of, and a friend of mine, who actually is wandering the, the place here, um, taught me how to knit in church so I wouldn't fall asleep. And then about a couple of weeks later, my niece called me up. Yeah, Roxanne, I have to get rid of my sheep. So I got two sheep from her, and then not too about three or four weeks later, a friend of mine, actually, she's at that booth over there. I called, not knowing it was her, I called to talk to the person in Tallinn County who was in charge of um, uh, the Sheep Association that's here in Connecticut, and she's the Tallinn County rep. And I'm talking to her, and she, I said, are you Regina? She goes, yeah. I said, uh, I'm Roxanne. We used to go to high school together. Oh my God. So that was like really weird. And she started to teach me how to work with wool. And I eventually, strangely enough, a friend of mine from town was moving and she gave me her daughter's spinning wheel, which turned out to be a magnificent wheel. So going to the Yankee Fiber Guild out of Plainfield, and learning by watching, I taught myself how to spin bolt and went from there. And now I spin, weave, needle felt, do all my own dyeing, do the, all, all the processing myself. So that's it.
name is Jeff Strong. I have Jeff's kettle corn. I'm from Tallinn, Connecticut with our store in Tallinn, Connecticut. I live in Vernon. I do uh, several uh, farmers markets. I do Rockville, South Windsor, Enfield, uh, Andover, Manchester, and I do car shows and other events. question to all of you. How many of you know what the three basic colors are today? What's one color? Red. I got red right here. What's another color? Yellow. I got yellow right here, but who knows? What's the, what's the third color? What is it? Yellow. It is? How did you know that? Well, I tell you what, if we mix red and we mix yellow together, can we get blue? What do you get? I'll do the mixing. All of you out there, follow her and do the clapping. Let's see if we can get blue. Are you ready? We got red. We got yellow. Let's see if I mix them up if we can get blue. Are you ready? Here we go. You know what blue looks like? Is that it right here? Uh, what did you think you'd get if you mix red and yellow? What do you get when you mix red and yellow? You want orange? Let's give her orange. She wants orange. by mixing the red and the yellow. Now, I need one rope, and how many do we have here? Well, how do you get one if you have three? How do you do that? Tie them together. You could tie them together, not today. Today, it's the Harry Potter Hogwarts School of Magic Magic Book. This book is over 400 years old. Here's what it says right in the book. Holy cow, a 400-year-old north right there. Well, in the book, it says if you take the ends of all three of these ropes and you make them nice and even, would you say that the ends are nice and even, man? Yeah. Yes. Well, if you get the ends nice and even, you can end up with three even ones. By golly, one is right here, two here, and three here. But hold your applause. I know everybody was about to start clapping because they want to win that bunny rabbit. But we didn't want three and we didn't want two. How many did we want? One. 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 Well, here's how you get one. You take this end, put it together with that end, and you apply a little heat. Like that. And watch this. It 
folks. Wow. And hold your applause. I know everybody was about to clap, but what about the one rope I put down over here? We want, we want one, and we have two. So here's what we do. Steve, are you paying attention, Steve? Watch this. This might be one of the best parts of the show. Here, back up, fellas, so everybody could see. We have the two, Steve. We want one. We apply a little heat. You're not going to believe your eyes. Like that. Watch this. Bingo, it's one. Look, hold on. Oh, folks, hold your applause. Steve, you didn't applaud. And I think, hold on. Steve, I think I know why. Be honest with everybody here. You think this is still two pieces of rope. Be honest. Right, yes. What can I do to convince you that it's one? Let go of my hand? Would that do it? Yes. All right, boys and girls, count up to three. Steve wants me to let go of my hand. Here we go. One, one two, three. There it is, Steve, right there. Uh, <laughs> what happened? The wrong hand. This hand? Steve, it's early in the show. You want me to let go of this? I don't know what difference it makes. It's really...